couple things. Maybe just one. Tell us your name and spell it for us. Brad, B R A D, Nelson, N E L S O N. Go ahead, Council. Yeah, Mr. Nelson, you're the uh, Phoenix County Election Director. I am. Just have a couple of questions. Uh, you have, in the past, uh, Brian Crane has worked uh, through your office. Is, is he still employed there? He is employed, though, has been on an extended leave. Uh, okay. So, the, uh, does your office still uh, use the uh, Jim's uh, uh, software? It does not, by a direction by the Board of Supervisors, we purchased a new tabulation system that is known. It's from a vendor known election systems and software, and it's called the EVS. I apologize, I don't know what that stands for. It's called what? EVS 5200. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, it's, uh, this software is something that. ESMS election systems uh, and software, is that the name of the company? It is. Yeah, that also owns uh, uh, Debo, right? It's the merged. It also owns who? Debo. Um, my understanding is, is that uh, the Debo company sold premier election services partially to ESMS and also to another company vendor in, com in competition with ESMS known as Dominion. Okay. So, in, in, in terms of this software that you're using now, is that software, is that what your office uses to lay out the ballot files? It is. Okay. So what uh, uh, what your staff does is all of these different styles of ballots that are needed, your office lays that out with your software. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And then you, uh, your office then, one way or another transmits that information to uh, run back that does the actual printing of the ballots. If I may, uh, actually we send proofs out to the various jurisdictions here locally to make sure that the ballot reflects what they need for their particular jurisdiction. But I'm then sorry, I'm, can you just slow down for a little bit? Um, and I'm ready to just start the answer all over again. All right. Um, what we do is we produce the artwork and then send it to the various jurisdictions. It's been mentioned here in court previously that the city of Tucson, some school districts, things of that nature on the ballot as well. We send the proof to those jurisdictions to get their approval. <coughs> and then upon final approval from all those jurisdictions, we do send the artwork to Rutbeck. Okay, so uh, we had testimony that on uh, the September 18th, uh, Julie Bauer sent to candidates in Oro Valley uh, a copy of the ballot and ask for their comment on it. That's the kind of thing you're talking about? I'm not absolutely certain what uh, Ms. Bauer may have sent. Certainly she sent us the nomination papers from the individual candidates where the candidates listed how their names wish to be reflected. If uh, this court were to order that a candidate's name not appear on the ballot, then Want to see well, what does your staff do? Does your staff go to your ballot definition file you have with your software, delete that name, and then <coughs> it's a run back? I think in simple terms, yes. Okay. That's all I have to go. Of this witness. Thank you, Mr. Reader. When did you send this stuff to run back for printing? We sent the artwork. For them to begin the process of pre press on September the 10th. Okay, what is that process? Basically, we've sent the artwork that's been referred to by Mr. Rose uh, in various forms to the vendor. They get it ready in a pre press environment and make certain that it's actually going to be acceptable in the form that we've sent. Um, that was acceptable to them. We've sent us a couple of test files in advance of that day to make certain we were on the same page. And then on September the 14th, the printing actually began. And how long did it take to complete the print job, do you know, if you know? Uh, I, my understanding is, is that everything was completed on uh, the 9th, pardon me, the 17th of September, though I'm not certain about the insertion and other things that have been brought up in this court. How many ballots were produced as a result of that printing? 
my understanding is there's approximately, and this is countywide, not just for Oro Valley, but approximately 180,000 ballots to be consumed at the polls on election day. Approximately 40,000 ballots for use in walk-in absentee voting, plus some additional ballots, probably 20,000 or so of those, and some test ballots as well, and then the 300 and some thousand of the early ballots that have been mentioned previously. So the grand total is around what? We're, we're probably bumping up against about 485,000 ballots. Are all of those printed in that time frame? Uh, over those several days, and I believe that they've been operating almost 24 hours a day of the, of the printing presses there, I believe it was all done during those days. Okay, by the 17th. Correct. Okay. Um, what is your understanding of, of what would be entailed in, in, in uh, addressing the remedy with the court order the removal of these two names? As I mentioned earlier, this is brand new software for us, but one of the proofs that we sent out to the town of Salarita, they have a general claim question on the ballot, and they found what they perceived to be an error within the Spanish translation of the ballot. When we went in and changed the Spanish translation, the oval, where you actually vote yes or no, on that particular race shifted, not only on that ballot, but all the ballots elsewhere inside of the county. So we had to make certain that whenever we go in and change even just one thing on the ballot, that it doesn't affect the entire ballot for the entire election. So I would be very, very cautious about doing such a thing. Okay, so do you think it's a matter of just talking around like, hey, we need another 20,000 oral valley ballots quick? I, I don't. I think if, if we went in and changed that particular artwork, we would have to check the artwork for all other precincts within Pima County, not just in oral valley. Any idea of the time process? Probably about a week's worth of time. Have you, uh, you are the elections director for the county, is that correct? That is correct. Have you ever been involved in a situation where a challenge has been granted after votes been cast? I have not. You know what you would do about the votes that have been cast? Count them. I mean, the votes that have been cast already? Well, once I receive them from the county recorder's office, um, they are, uh, they're going to be counted. Thanks, sir. Mr. Sands? Uh, just one quick question to kind of clear something up. Are you familiar with the ballot on demand system? Um, we just uh, say that again. Are you familiar with the ballot on demand system that was asked about? We had a ballot on demand system, I want to say, in 2008 that we used for one election and found it to be unsatisfactory and we haven't used it since then. So it doesn't even exist? Not in Pima County. And it did not go well? That is correct. All right, thank you. Let's see. Um, Mr. Winfield, any questions? No, sir. Mr. Burke? No questions, John. Uh, redirect? Yes, yes, we got you. Uh, I would uh, like to uh, This is exhibit one. Exhibit one and uh, uh, so uh, there's a uh, if we look in the second copy, there's uh, a box that says vote for, for more than one higher map, screening, and win. Correct? Uh, and there is also a line for a right hand candidate, yes, but yes. Yeah. And the way that ballots are uh, counted. 
counted by, uh, your ballots are counted by uh, optical scanning machines. It's, to be correct, it's digital scanning, but yes, same principle. Then the machine to know that, for instance, um, higher math uh, vote is to be uh, counted. The counting machine is instructed if uh, there's a mark in that uh, round oval at that location, that vote should be counted for higher math. Assuming no other vocals have been filled in, yes. Excuse me? In other words, they didn't overvote their ballot. Oh, okay. Assuming they didn't vote for the two people. Exactly. Okay, sure. But that that's how the counting occurs in terms of the, uh, the, lo the location on the ballot is coded. So if that grand thing's filled in and they only fill in one, then that's counted. Right? Yes. Okay. So if, for instance, uh, Joseph Winfield, example was to be uh, taken off the ballot, then what your office would do using your ballot definition software, your employee there, would be to uh, <coughs> delete that. Just delete his name, right? I believe so. Okay. So then, uh, and if that is deleted, and the instruction then would be the, the you delete uh, the instruction to count uh, anybody in that oval, right? Correct. Okay, then it leaves two other names, right? Mm -hmm. And that's all in that little white area, and no other artwork anywhere else is affected other than deleting that name. I don't know that. You don't know that. No. That's why I was just I think. Go ahead. Okay. Tell me why deleting a, a name there in that line would affect anything else other than that. Because of the experience that we had when we corrected the Spanish translation within the ballot proof for the town of Salarita, it changed the ovals not just for that election, but for other elections that were reflected on the ballot. Okay. So what what we're talking about in that situation was it changed where an oval was, so it changed the instruction for counting that oval at that location. Correct. Right. But not for that office that we changed. Okay. But, but if the name was deleted here, then it simply changes the instruction not to count that name at that location. You don't need to change location, correct? In the terms that you put it, that's correct. Okay. So uh, can you explain what happened on that other one? Or, I don't know. As, I, as I mentioned, it's fairly new software. And so we are asking questions of the vendor as we go along as well. But uh, it was an occurrence that occurred in the gym software as well. Okay. But uh, do you have any testimony different than if your employees were asked on the ballot definition software to delete a name that they could delete that name, leave the instruction the ovals, and the same for the other names on the ballot? If we're ordered to do so, we certainly could be done. Uh, I'm concerned of what it would do elsewhere with the artwork. Yeah, but do you know anything about what it would do otherwise with the artwork? Or is this just a concern? It is a concern. Okay. But do you have any technical information or any information about what that deletion might do anywhere else to the artwork? Only from the occurrence that we had with the town of Celery. That's the only thing that I can apply to this song. Okay. That's uh, so important.
All right. Do you want this sheet back, sir? Mr. Reisner? Uh, the yeah. sheet? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Excuse? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir, for coming in. Please watch your step on the way down.